Medicinal Foods and Food Remedies In this audiobook you will learn about key plant foods and their medicinal uses. Chapter 4 Fig A lump of figs laid on the boil of King Hezekiah, as recorded in 2 Kings XX. 7 brought about that monarch's recovery. The figs used were doubtless ripe figs, not the dried figs of our grocers. This fruit, says Dr. Fernie, is soft, easily digested, and corrective of strumous disease. The large blue fig may be grown in England, in the milder parts, and under a warm wall. The fresh figs were rarely seen at one time outside of the large, high-class, fruit shops, but for the last year, or two I have seen them peddled in the streets of London like apples and oranges in due season. Green figs, not unripe, were commonly eaten by Roman gladiators, which is surely a sufficient tribute to the fruit's strength-giving qualities. The best way of preparing dried figs for eating is to wash them very quickly in warm water and steam for 20 minutes or until tender. Grape The special value of the grape lies in the fact that it is a very quick repairer of bodily waste, the grape sugar being taken immediately into the circulation, without previous digestion. For this reason is grape juice the best possible food for fever patients, consumptives, and all who are in a weak and debilitated condition. The grapes should be well chewed, the juice and pulp swallowed, and the skin and stones rejected. In countries where the grape cure is practiced, Consumptive patients are fed on the sweeter varieties of grape, while those troubled with liver complaints, acid gout, or other effects of overfeeding, take the less sweet kinds. Dr. Fernie deprecates the use of grapes for the ordinary gouty or rheumatic patient, but with all due deference to that learned authority, I do not believe the fruit exists that is not beneficial to the gouty person. One of the most gouty and rheumatic people I know, a vegetarian who certainly never overfeeds himself, derives great benefit from a few days almost exclusive diet of grapes. Cream of tartar, a potash salt obtained from the crust formed upon bottles and casks by grape juice when it is undergoing fermentation in the process of becoming wine, is often used as a medicine. It has been cited as an infallible specific in cases of smallpox, but I do not recommend its use, as it probably gets contaminated with other substances during the process of manufacture. In any case its value cannot be compared with the fresh, ripe fruit. I have little doubt, but that an exclusive diet of grapes, combined with warmth, proper bathing, and the absence of drugs, would suffice to cure the most malignant case of smallpox. Sufferers from malaria may use grapes with great benefit. For this purpose the grapes, with the skins and stones, should be well pounded in a mortar and allowed to stand for three hours. The juice should then be strained off and taken. Or persons with good teeth may eat the grapes, including the skins and stones, if they thoroughly macerate the latter. In the absence of fresh grapes raisin tea is a restoring and nourishing drink. Dr. Fernie notes that it is of the same proteid value as milk, if made in the proportions given below. It is much more easily digested than milk, and therefore of great use in gastric complaints. Sufferers from chronic gastritis could not do better than make raisin tea their sole drink, and bananas their only food for a time. Raisin tea To make raisin tea, take half a pound of good raisins and wash well, but quickly, in lukewarm water. Cut up roughly and put into the old-fashioned beef tea jar with a quart of distilled or boiled and filtered rain water. Cook for four hours, or until the liquid is reduced to one pint. Scald a fine hair sieve and press through it all except the skins and stones. If desired a little lemon juice may be added. Gooseberry The juice of green gooseberries cureth all inflammations, while the red gooseberry is good for bilious subjects but it has been said that gooseberries are not good for melancholy persons. Gooseberries are an excellent spring medicine. Lavender It is very much to be regretted that the nerve-soothing vegetable perfumes of our grandmothers have been superseded, for the most part, by the cheap mineral products of the laboratory. Scents really prepared from the flowers that give them their names are expensive to make, and consequently high-priced. 
The cheap scents are all mineral concoctions, and their use is more or less injurious. A pennyworth of dried lavender flowers in a muslin bag is even cheaper to buy, inoffensive to smell, which is more than can be said of cheap manufactured scents, and possesses medicinal properties. Lavender flowers were formerly used for their curative virtues in all disorders of the head and nerves. An oil, prepared by infusing the crushed lavender flowers in olive oil, is recommended for anointing palsied limbs, and at one time a spirit was prepared from lavender flowers, which was known as palsy drops. A tea made with hot water and lavender tops will relieve the headache that comes from fatigue. Dr. Fernie advises one dessert spoonful per day of pure lavender water for eczema. The scent of lavender will keep away flies, fleas, and moths. Lemon. Lemons are invaluable in cases of gout, malaria, rheumatism, and scurvy. They are also useful in fevers and liver complaints. I have found the juice of one lemon taken in a little hot water remove dizzy feelings in the head accompanied by specks and lights dancing before the eyes, consequent upon the liver being out of order, in half an hour. The juice of a lemon in hot water may be taken night and morning with advantage by sufferers from rheumatism. In the lemon cure, for gout and rheumatism, the patients begin with one lemon per day and increase the quantity until they arrive at a dozen or more. But I think this is carrying it to excess. Dr. Fernie recommends the juice of one lemon mixed with an equal proportion of hot water to be taken pretty frequently in cases of rheumatic fever. A prescription for malaria, given in the Lancet, is the following. Take a full-sized lemon, cut it in thin transverse slices, rind and all, boil these down in an earthenware jar containing a pint and a half of water until the decoction is reduced to half a pint. Let this cool on the windowsill overnight and drink it off in the morning. A Florentine doctor discovered that fresh lemon juice will alleviate the pain of cancerous ulceration of the tongue. His patient sucked slices of lemon. A German doctor found that fresh lemon juice kills the diphtheria bacillus and advises a gargle of diluted lemon juice to diphtheric patients. Such a gargle is excellent for sore throat. Dr. Fernie recommends lemon juice for nervous palpitation of the heart. Lemon juice rubbed onto corns will eventually do away with them, and if applied to unbroken chillblains will effect a cure. Lemon juice is also an old remedy for the removal of freckles and blackheads from the face. It should be rubbed in at bedtime, after washing with warm water. Lettuce Lettuce is noted for its sedative properties, although these are not great in the large, highly manured, commercial specimens. It is very easily digested and may, therefore, be eaten by those with whom salads disagree in the ordinary way. Nettle The tender tops of young nettles picked in the spring make a delicious vegetable, somewhat resembling spinach. They are excellent for sufferers from gout and skin eruptions. Fresh nettle juice is prescribed in doses of from 1 to 2 tablespoonfuls for loss of blood from the lungs, nose, or internal organs. Nuts Nuts are the true substitute for flesh meat. They contain everything in the way of nourishment that meat contains, minus the poisonous constituents of the latter. They are very rich in proteid, flesh and muscle former, and fat. In addition they possess all the constituents that go to make up a perfect food. Nuts and water form a complete dietary, although I do not suggest that any reader should try it. If he did so he would probably eat too many nuts, not realizing how great an amount of nourishment is contained in a concentrated form. No one should eat more than a quarter of a pound of nuts per day, in addition to other food. A pound per day would be more than sufficient if no other food were taken. I have little doubt, but that the diet of the future will consist solely of nuts and fresh fruit. After all it is the food most favored by monkeys, and our teeth and digestive apparatus more nearly resemble those of the monkey than the carnivorous and herbivorous animals so many of us seemingly prefer to imitate. The chief objection to nuts is supposed to be on account of their indigestibility. But this has its foundation, not in the nut, but in the manner of eating it. 
I recommend all those people who find nuts indigestible to pay a visit to the zoo and see how the monkey eats his nuts. He chews and chews and chews. And after that he chews. I know, alas, that the majority of people do not possess teeth like the monkey, and to these I can only suggest that they macerate their nuts in a nut butter machine. There are several of these machines on the market, and they are stocked by all large, food reform provision dealers. They cost anything from six or seven shillings. The daily allowance of nuts may be thoroughly macerated and eaten with fruit in the place of cream. Ordinary people may use a nut mill, which flakes, not macerates, the nuts. But people with bad teeth and a weak digestion will do better to invest in a nut butter machine. I may add that the nuts will not macerate properly unless they are crisp, and to this end they must be put in a warm oven for a short time, just before grinding. I have found new, English-grown walnuts crisp enough without this preparation. But if the nuts are not crisp enough, they will simply clog the machine. Now to our nuts. Almonds are the most nourishing. Next in order come walnuts, hazel or cob nuts, and Brazil nuts. The proteid value of these three does not differ much. After these come the chestnut and coconut, and lastly we have the pine kernel. Speaking very roughly, we may liken walnuts, hazelnuts, and Brazil nuts to be for flesh and muscle-forming value, while pine kernels correspond more nearly to fish. Almonds are nearly double the value of beef.